guys, welcome back to the What's Next Podcast. I'm your unreliable host, Steve Blazin, and I'm so happy to be here today. We're coming to you uh, from Monterey, California, right here on the beach. It's a beautiful day. It's, oh, it's a beautiful day. Sun's out. Um, today, I've got an amazing guest here. Uh, it was a friend of a friend of mine, so I don't know him very well. It's actually the first time we're, we're meeting here. Uh, Mr. W- uh, w- Rich Westbrook. Rich Westbrook, yeah. Easy for me to say. Good to yeah. meet you, sir. Nice to meet How you. How are you? Yeah. Doing great. Welcome. And I thank you for having me here. Yeah, sure. Um, we did a couple of podcasts with a friend of yours, and he said, hey, man, we've got to get this guy in here because you're somehow like the manager of the Monterey <laughs> comedy improv. How did you come up with that? Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, well, th- that's a long, long history. But, that's a long um, history. So in 2008, okay. I saw an adver- advertisement for a an audition for an improv troupe. I see, you're right. Hooked up with the guy that was running the troupe here, he was trying to form an improv troupe here. Yeah. Jerry Orton, he was, he's from Tahoe, and he, he comes here and lit, moved here. Oh, I see, yeah. And so he wanted to start an improv troupe, and he had just women initially. Yeah. And it was Women of Whimsy. Okay, And right. he was trying to, like, get guys to do it. <laughs> and eventually, we, you know, we held a class, and some guys – joined and so then it was a separate group yeah for, you know and then we kind of integrated but that was 2008 in 2014 he essentially retired handed over the the company to me okay i rebranded it we were initially called the mirth which was kind of like a 1950s theme right with bowling yeah, shirts right kind of hard to market that nobody really got well, it. well what is that right right so <laughs> right. i thought i'd make it simple monterey yeah. comedy improv simple yeah simple yeah, and yeah. since then, oh, I've had about 50 different players. Oh, no uh, kidding. Yeah, people wow. people come, people go, they move. And Ben, he's one of the newer, not the new guy now. He's He's been there a couple of years now. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah, he's a I great guy. Yeah, yeah he came back from the military and he was, it was actually our first podcast. And uh, we called it Healing Benjamin. Healing Benjamin. Because okay. it was, you know, he was, he was a lot, had a lot of PTSD and that kind of right. thing. He was trying to work through and. Um, when I talked to him the second time, he was telling me about the improv group and he was just, he's like, I've just been so serious for so many years. I just need a couple of years right. to just to play, just to have fun. And then he got in with you guys and he's just, just loving it. Yeah. Yeah. He, well, he, he was pretty intense. When yeah. He yeah. Started. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Can imagine. Like a slow down, Ben. Yeah, right. <laughs> Less volume. <laughs> <laughs> so we started off at 11. We just kind of bring him to a 10. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> now he's at about a good six or yeah. seven. So he's really, really evolved quite a bit. Did you have a comedy background before you got it? Clearly you must have. It's something no. drew you to improv. No, not really. I mean, it's, it, it, I started out in 1992. Uh-huh. I joined uh, Toastmasters. Oh, okay, sure, sure. Yeah, public yeah. speaking. Yeah, yeah. Because I, that's when I started. I started um, my business with my wife. Mm. We're both chiropractors. Oh, okay. By yeah, day. Yeah. Oh. And so I wanted to improve my communication skills because okay. I, was, I was just terrible. Sure. I mean, I thought I was good, <laughs> but no, I was terrible. I had this a speech pathologist on the story above me. She'd come down and just gently ask invite me every week and i thought why does she keep inviting me oh i need this <laughs> she can hear me through the floor yeah right? Something. so toastmasters have been doing that since 90 92 and in toastmasters there's a table topic section which is impromptu you get a question and you get one to two minutes to answer it and i always loved that really so yeah i really enjoyed that and then also in toastmasters we have speech contests and there's a humor speech contest. So I would enter that periodically. Ah, right. So I enjoyed that. But mainly I enjoyed just entertaining people. Sure. And then I came across Jerry Orton in the audition for this improv class. Oh, yeah. And the monster was created then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where'd you come up? Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Arroyo Grande, California. Just down oh, the coast California. by Pismo Beach. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, not yeah. too far from here. I, I try not to look up too much information on people, but I thought, right. well, there's a Rich Westbrook who's a chiropractor in Monterey. That I wonder I. if that's the same guy. That's the same guy. Yeah, yeah what's the company? It's New Beginnings Chiropractic. New Beginnings. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, how oh, cool. Yeah. When did you start yeah. that? You started with your <laughs> wife? She was, she's also a well, chiropractor? Yes. Yeah, so we were in chiropractic college, and uh-huh. she was the quarter ahead of me. I see. So this was in August of 91, or well, maybe a little bit before that. We, just, we got engaged, and in the same year, 
we bought a practice before either one of us graduated. <laughs> so the purchase of the practice is, it was contingent on her passing her boards. Right. So it was a little tense, right? Yeah. And I was a few months behind. So we come down here, we move in together, buy a business, and got married a few months later. It was it was a lot in a very short period of time. Wow. And I I was doing massage. To, sure, to, right. Until my boards came around. Yeah, I yeah. fortunately passed them because there was right. a lot of pressure on, <laughs> yeah, on me exactly. at that point. So, yeah, that's what all started. So she's also a chiropractor. Yeah. Yeah. And you just picked it up from a previous owner? Or? Yeah, it was a woman that was retiring. Oh, okay. And she's been in business for when she did She had been in business uh, for 10 years. Okay. And she had an injury. Oh, nice. And so it was a small Not practice. Not nice that she got injured, but nice, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Another yeah. one down. How rude is that? <laughs> Do you yeah, know what so I mean? we took over essentially. Her it's kind established. of established, established, right? Yeah, to right. Get started. We knew we had no idea what we were doing, right? Yeah, but you, you learn what not to do. Sure. After so many years, yeah, yeah. you run out of things to fail at, and which is great because improv is all about embracing the failure, exactly. failing, failing forward. How perfect! Yeah. yeah. So I have a long career with that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you were a massage therapist before that. No, I was. I just went to chiropractic college. Okay, but I did a lot of soft tissue work I see. in chiropractic college. Oh, okay, right. Um, but I was. I'm under my license. I can do that. But I didn't go to massage school. Oh, I that. see. Right, right. Yeah. Basically, what happens? The practice we bought. There's a massage therapist there and the chiropractor. Well, they both left. Oh, I see. So the patients still wanted some massage. Uh, so before I hired a massage therapist, I was filling in, killing some time, doing temp work. Whatever I could do right, right. to try to earn my keep <laughs> and get your hands on bodies yeah. too, you know that just uh, that's a, yeah that's a good learning lesson. Yeah. I remember those first few years in massage, right? It's like, am I doing this right? <laughs> doing it right? I don't know. Turned out okay. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, so you moved down here and uh, tell me a little bit. Tell me a little bit about the improv. Like, wh- how would somebody get into it? And I've got some friends that have been on the on here and. They were comedians or had their 15 minutes of fame mm-hmm. down in L.A. and kind of interested in looking at it. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I sent a text over to a buddy of mine. He's like, you got to get part of this, you know, yeah. and check it out. So tell me a little yeah. bit about what's, yeah. what's going on with that. So we have a couple classes a week. Actually, okay. Technically three classes. Okay. It's, they're all at St. Timothy Church off of, off of Soledad Drive. Oh, sure. There's a music room there. We try not to defile the space <laughs> too much. <laughs> it, it is the church grounds. But we have this music room that we use. And on Thursday evening, there is a, we call it game night. Mm. And that's just improv games. Similar to what you see on Whose Line Is It Anyway? Oh, okay. We just do a bunch of silly games. And there's not a whole bunch of instruction. There's some. I mm-hmm. tell people teach people how to do the games. But it's not instructor heavy for sure. And that's Thursdays from six to seven thirty, mm. and, and it's these are all drop ins. It's oh, ten dollars. Okay. Yeah, it's a ten dollars drop in, and the classes aren't se- sequential, so you don't have to go in sequence f- to oh, understand to okay. learn it. I just focus on an, an, an one element of improv in the classes. So that's Thursday night. Friday night, I have two classes from five to six. It's called it's scene work, and these are longer. It's called long form. Mm. Because what you see on TV, the whose line is it anyway, mm. those are games. We call those short form. It's pretty okay. quick, yeah. two to three minutes, four minutes maybe, five minutes the most. But a long form is when you get a suggestion. It's like, hey, Stephen, may I have a word, please? And you give me a word. And then they will do a scene, and basically a play. It's 45 minutes long. So that is a whole different type of improv. Mm. So that is five to six. And then six to seven is the basic class. That's when I do more of the teaching of the basics of improv. Oh, I see. So if you got a friend, it's Friday from six to seven is the Shoot best him that way. option. Yeah. yeah. yeah I definitely. remember watching uh, what Drew Carey was on that. Uh, wasn't he on the uh, Who's Line? Who's yeah. Line? Right. Yeah, right. He was amazing. Yeah. I used to watch those guys. It's like, here's a couple of words or something, make something out of it. And right. they were scrambling sometimes, but oh, other yeah. times it was hilarious. Oh, yeah. No, they're they're talented. Yeah. They're very talented. It's a lot of fun. Do you get some talented people coming in? Or? Y- yeah. Y- yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people that don't have a lot of talent when sure. they start, but become really good. Right. Because the thing is, it's really, I'm not teaching them. I'm teaching, yes, the mechanics of certain games, of the games, but it's really just uh, getting them past their inhibitions. Yeah. 
So it's really an unlearning. I see, right. It's really just unlearning sure. all these things that we're taught by our parents, teachers, preachers, everybody, yeah. all the adults, right? Yeah. Trying to control kids. Yeah. When we are at the apex of our improv and our play, it's just literally taught out of us for exactly. so many years. Yeah. And then it's so much emphasis on being right, right? All the testing and the scores, all of that. So in improv, people don't want to be wrong. And I do a lot of games that forces you to be wrong. Nice. <laughs> Getting used to being able to fail and being okay and just laughing at it. Right. And just, hey, that's great. It's gone. Next Recircuit thing. the brain. Yeah, yeah, that really that's does. That's okay to mess up. Yeah, it resets a lot of these neural connections we have. Yeah, right. So it's, it's great. It's amazing to see the growth that people go through. Yeah. Just they come in and invariably they always have their hands in their pockets or in front of them and they're just I get like a turtle in a shell. <laughs> yeah, right. All the limbs are, you know, pulled into their sure. body. And then it takes time, but eventually they start opening up and Shake the creativity bit. comes out. Yeah. So it's really just knocking down those walls and then allowing their creativity to flow and to sh come through. Yeah. That's the joy. Sure, right. Right. I know comedy is a little bit of a science. You know, you listen to the professionals and, you know, how they are they do so much writing, they do so much, you know, work on different thoughts and ideas. That's kind of what I had uh, an idea that you were doing in there, more of a scientific thing, but you're actually just trying to break them open. Yeah. Very much to so. let go. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll take a deep dive and really into what's holding someone back. I see. And right. I have a whole bunch of exercises to allow the person to feel comfortable, first of yeah, all. Yeah. Right. And then to just start letting go and to being creative and really not caring yeah. what people think. Sure. Because that's that's the big block. It's like, oh, I'm so concerned. I'm going to say something wrong. I'm going to look silly. Or they have all these reasons why sure. we're just so inhibited. Yeah. But I always tell people that you are not you when you're doing improv. You are a character. Sure. So when you are a character, you can do anything. Exactly. But you as a person, you're very limited because of your training and all of the <laughs> things we learn that aren't yeah. very helpful at times. Right. And so this improv is enables them to just open up in a different way they've never yeah. been opened up. Not just yeah. in the improv class, but I bet all through their life. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Learn They're... how to take it as a joke or right. learn failure. Oh, yeah. That's a good thing. There, there are a ton of life lessons in you improv. Bet. Yeah. A ton of life, life lessons. Yeah, right. For yeah. sure. They'll take with them forever. That is that is the hope. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so what else yeah. is going on? Let's see. What's going on? Is the Well, as far as improv goes, we... Got something brewing at the Lighthouse Cinemas in Pacific okay. Grove. Have you heard what's going on there? No. Yeah, well, that theater has been there since 1987. And there's some years where I think it was closed. But now it's up and running, and they have four cinemas in there. Okay. The guy that's managing it, what they're doing now is they've got a couple of new licenses. One's a beer and wine license, and the other one is an event venue license. That means that they can do other things besides movies. Sure. So they have two screens that will be designated for movies. Uh -huh. And the other two um, screens, they're modified. They've built a stage out in front of the screen. So that it's a performance venue now. Right. So they're going to have bands. They'll have comics. And they're going to have Monterey Comedy Improv. We're going to be there um, May 11th. Nice. May 11th, They still yeah. got the screens up that they can play things if they're having a concert. I, I can see it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, they, yeah I mean, there's a I, lot of options there. Yeah. Sure. So, right. it, so we're pretty excited about it. So you're going to actually start setting up some shows. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the first so, ones. Like, script it out. Yeah. And, yeah. May, May 11th is our 11th. first show there. 7.30 on a Saturday night. Let's go. Yeah, come check it out. Yeah. yeah. In the comfort of a theater seat, which is nice. How about that? And eat popcorn, beer, wine, sure, <laughs> whatever right, you want. Right, so, yeah. A little bit of wine, a little bit of beer goes a long way in an improv show. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So well, that'll be fun. That'll be a little nerve-wracking for the crew. Yeah, and that'll be. up on a stage in front of people. Uh, well, we yeah, we do show. We've been doing shows since I started. Oh, you actually do? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We okay. have, um, we, uh, for about a year, we were at the Dolly Theater, which is uh, the oh, Wharf Stanton okay. Theater. Sure. We are in that stage, which is a 100-seat theater for – we are doing two shows a month.
for about a year there. Mm. So we oh I've, we have tons of shows under no our kidding. belts. Yeah, and oh, this is boy. nothing new. Okay, I thought this was like the first oh, no. time. Maybe you're just at, doing workshops. No, no, at this place, this is our first time. Okay, but uh, we've been performing at Paper Wing Theater, which is in Monterey, wow. uh, Cannery, Cannery Row. That's a great venue. Yeah. Also, Carl Cherry Theater. It's a small fifty seat theater in Carmel. It's basically a house with half of it's a an art exhibit, and the other half is a theater. And we do shows there peri- periodically. Right. Yeah. And then um, every year, over the last four or five years, we've been doing shows at the Outdoor Forest Theater, which is such a beautiful setting. Outdoors, huh? Yeah. Beautiful. It's great. Do you t- do you tape these things or record them where people can find them online? <laughs> yeah. Or just well, kind of a... I generally don't. Yeah. The reason why I don't is because improv really you need to be there there's a connection that, that takes place with the audience and the players yeah and when you see it like you take a little bit of it it's somewhat out of context I see. because you don't know what was going on half an hour earlier in the show yeah like, let's say we do some recall comedy well you're gonna not really know what that's related to mm. so i generally don't do a lot but there's a little bit that yeah. i've done but I prefer people just to go and watch us. Sure, right. Not, right. not to watch a video. Yeah. And well, one you... guy in the audience, he filmed a show. Mm. I didn't know he was doing that. And later on, I found out, he put it on his website. And the website was sketchy. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what is yeah. that? So now I have to be really clear with the audience that there's no videotaping oh, good. the show. Right. Yeah. So you go the other way. Make sure there is no tape. Yeah. You know, make everybody feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. And- Wow, how fun. Yeah. How fun, yeah. Got any other hobbies? Yeah. That's a, that keeps me busy. Keeps you pretty busy, you know, huh? Yeah, I mean, a chiropractor by day yeah. and an improv instructor by night. Sure, <laughs> that, that's, yeah. It keeps me pretty busy. And well, third, like I said, Toastmasters is on Thursday mornings. Oh, you're still doing that? Oh, yeah, no, I never stopped doing that. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I'm one of those guys Boy. that when I start something, I just don't stop it. I've heard some great things about Toastmasters. Yeah, it's a fantastic a organization. have gone through that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I've been doing that since I since I joined. Sure. Um, so it's about thirty two years now. And another group that I that I'm part of is called La Tip. Have you heard of La Tip? I have not. Okay, now I'm going to pitch you now. Right so on. I've never heard of it. In <laughs> fact, this morning we had a meeting. Today it was it was on Zoom, but we're going to full time again because the whole pandemic you know it distorted everything. We were we used to meet every Tuesday morning, seven fifteen a.m. Live and then the pandemic hit, then we're Zoom, and then we've been hybrid for a while. Zoom live, Zoom live. So I'm the incoming president, and I said, No more hybrid, we're going live full time, right? But what it is, it's a, it's a networking organization that it's only one member, one category can be taken. So I'm mm. the only chiropractor there, mm. there can only be one realtor, so one category, so it's exclusive that way. But we have a target. There's categories we're targeting. And massage therapist is one on our list. Right on. Massage therapist and a painter. Those are on our hit list. Right on. <laughs> so you were invited to check us out. You could probably find your painter, too. There's a, yes. lot, of, there's a lot of art out here. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, like house painting, generally. Oh, oh I see. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great group. It's nice for a bit. It's a good business. Yeah. Um, networking. You know, I've been doing massage for over about a decade and a half now, you know, and, and the one thing that I love so much about what I do is the long-term customers that come in, they're bent over, they're wearing dark clothes, they're not happy with life or anything else. And as you go through the weeks and get them back to well, lack of pain or range of motion or all these things that you deal with also, you start to realize, you know, you start to see they start coming in in brighter clothes They've got their makeup yeah. back on. Their pain's starting to go away, you know, and you can almost see a transformation. Do you see that in the comedy show? Do you see people come in that are, like you say, bottled up? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, and you I, see them over the months oh, open up? That oh, must be yeah. amazing. Yeah, that is – it's really amazing. Yeah. I, have, I have a handful of students that I just – I never would have imagined this much evolution right. in their – being present and being more outgoing and more expressive. Sure. Just uh, just allowing them themselves yeah. to have fun and just say yes. yes Enjoy to life. life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. So it's interesting. You know, that's kind of my thing. I'm, I I like to say I'm a life enhancer. Right. There you <laughs> so go. Perfect. With chiropractic. Right. Yeah, yeah. They get better. 
physically and mentally too. Yeah, exactly. And with the improv, you know, there's I'm definitely in help supporting them in that journey to mm-hmm. to be more yeah outgoing and yeah. just enjoy life more. Continue down the journey. Find yeah. other things that might grab you. Right. You never know. Yeah. I mean, there's enough to be negative out there. There's enough sure. of that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's nice to have that one hour a week that people come in and they can just let go. Yeah. And right. that's what people say. They, they say, that, you know, this this is the best thing for my week. Yeah. And I have this one guy, he's a, a newer newer player in the troupe. And he's, you know, he, he says, he's, I'm a depressive. And he goes, this this one hour, these two hours a week that I do, it's life changing for me. For all the rest of his days, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, no, it's it's big. It's yeah. huge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it seems like oh, we're just being silly, goofing around. No, kind of. <laughs> we but. are, but <laughs> right. you didn't do that. The last time you did that was forty years ago. Yeah, right. right. No, that's <laughs> and true. Now you're doing it again. It's the first time you were allowed to in forty right. years. You yeah, know, just to goof off. Yeah, definitely to really enjoy themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I know Benjamin was saying it was hard to get used to the whole troop laughing at me. But that's something you have to work through. It's That's okay. That's <laughs> part of it. You know, that's... Right. I laugh at them. They laugh at us. It's a it's a yeah. whole new thing. It's opening up new windows right. for them, you know? Well, the thing is with improv, though, you're... When it goes... When you're doing it really well, yeah. expert level... It's interesting and it's like impressive, but it's generally not funny. If you're doing it and then somebody messes up, now it's funny. Right, right. <laughs> so when you mess up, it's encouraged. Exactly, right. <laughs> what other business <laughs> I, calls for that? I think that's exactly what you were talking about. Yeah. You know, getting laughed at for messing up and yep, just yeah. smiling, having fun with the whole thing. Right. And he comes from a you know pretty intense military background. Um, and there were, I saw that, you know, there's, that was definitely present You're right. when, he, when he initially started going to classes, yeah, yeah. but now he's probably probably talking, talking about Ben and great. He's such an open book. I mean, he's sure, right. no, he doesn't mind. but I, and I've told him personally, I said, he's one of the few guys that there isn't any kind of, you know, like male kind of competition in that he's just completely okay he's like there isn't like there's no reason that you have ego with it when i'm talking to him yeah and that's that's rare rare isn't it huh? it's very yeah, rare yeah. especially from one guy to another guy it's sure. usually there's a little bit of that defensive and kind of you know yeah you know like you know what i mean sure <laughs> yeah guys being guys yeah, and yeah. Um, trying to um have a high status right. effectively yeah oh he's just he's just there to have fun yeah he's already reached that status yeah he's coming back so that's, that's awesome. Yeah, it's very enjoyable. Yeah, you get other people like that. Did you see the oh, yeah. long journey? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. No yeah, kidding. Great. So, how's the chiropractic biz going? Well, that's good. You mentioned also how you've been doing massage for ten years, right? A little Which more. Great. Thought, yeah. So when I I have have it's great to see families. I mean, I'm at some families. It's four generations, right? They come in and they refer their parents in, and then they have kids, and then their kids have kids. Right. So to to adjust and to work with the generations has been just such a blessing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I really enjoy that. I get that a lot too. You know, I'll help somebody, and they're oh, I got to send my son in. He's got a baseball injury, and oh, my mom yeah. also. She's having some hip problems, and yeah, it does. It just kind of they bring the whole family in. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Because you know, it's like, why would you not? You know. If you're experiencing something so positive in your life, yeah. why wouldn't you want your family members to have the same thing? Might as well. <laughs> right? Right, yeah. right. I mean, why be all f- feeling great and wonderful and go home to people that are miserable? <laughs> right? It's like, hey, let's all be feeling great here. At least present it to them. Right. You know? Exactly. A lot of people don't, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. How fun. Yeah. So, uh, where uh, do you have... How, how many locations do you have? One location, or are you? Yeah, oh yeah, one's enough. Expanding, <laughs> or yeah, yeah. No, well, we're we're comfortable, kind of where we are. So yeah, as, you know, thirty three years is a, a long time to. <laughs> I've heard the name many times. Yeah, that's get, why I wonder how big yeah. it is. No, no, just my wife and I. It's yeah, it. just the two of yeah, you. Yeah, we've wow. just been here a long time. <laughs> you guys been rocking and rolling, right? Yeah, we're off of uh, Highway sixty eight off of York Road. Okay. Silver Cloud Court. Yeah. It's Beautiful building. Love it there. Yeah. So it's nice. Are there different types of chiropractic or? Oh, boy. I don't I know. Mean, I used to sail. Uh, uh, I'm a competitive sailor. 
you know, I do a lot of races in Lake Michigan. And um, one guy that I raced with for years and years was um, a chiropractor, uh, Palmer, uh, Mr. Palmer, Dr. Palmer. Um, oh, what was his first name? Not, oh, was uh, his first name is Palmer? Last name, Tom oh. Palmer. Okay. Is a, um, Tom, is a, yeah, I know. I wondered that too when I first met him. Palmer is a very big name well, that is the guy that discovered chiropractic oh, okay right so if right. you know one of the palmers which i don't think any of the men from are Michigan. alive from directly about, yeah, yeah i was where they started oh i see right but oh that's a great name for your chiropractor yeah right <laughs> it's yeah. the founder no he just retired and did real well <laughs> okay. for himself right. yeah that's, so i've i but i've never gone to a chiropractor yeah i know a few of them but you know i oh. broke my neck i've done have so many injuries in my life i'm so afraid to to do that, you know, are there different types of oh, chiropractic? There, there, well, for people I mean, like me that are scared to death of having their bones crack. Well, yeah. So, I mean, have, are there different types of massage? Yeah, I true. Would right. say a lot. Right, right. right. All kinds. Mm-hmm. So, chiropractic, there's so many techniques. Is there? Yeah. The what most people are familiar with is what's called a high velocity thrust. Yeah. Where sometimes it produces a popping sound. Sure. But there are a ton of soft or low force techniques. Is there? Oh you know, yeah, where there's no twisting at all. Really? So yeah, there's 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 a I think like 350 techniques, right? There's so much out yeah. there. It's crazy. But so yeah, so yeah, there's there's a technique for everyone. Right, right. You know, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. More of a soft. I've I've had people come in and say, "Oh, my chiropractor has this little electric thing that he goes up and down the spine with, you know, and I don't know what does that do. Does that loosen up the muscles before you? No, see, the thing is, that well, here's the difference. Okay, there's there's a lot of things a lot of things chiropractors do that aren't that isn't chiropractic. I see. So, for instance, if I'm doing soft tissue work on you, that's not chiropractic. True. That's more in the realm of physical therapy. Yeah. Um, massage therapists, but we're licensed to do it, and we do a lot of that. Sure. But technically, it's not chiropractic. Mm. What chiropractic is? It's a high speed thrust into a spinal segment okay that can be done by hands or there's instruments um, I see. for instance my wife she uses what's called the activator it's the most researched and the most common adjusting instrument on the market mm. or in the in the chiropractic profession and it's hard to you know, it seems kind of weird but it that tool provides a thrust that's 200 times faster than than i can do it so it's very fast but low force. I see. So you barely feel anything. So much so that the first time I had it in the in college, I thought, that's not doing anything. That can't possibly be doing anything. Right. But you no, know, it's very powerful. Is it? But you you hardly notice it. Yeah, it's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really what chiropractic is. That high velocity thrust, whether it's from a tool or from the hands. Removing nerve interference, letting the body heal itself. Mm, right, right. Yeah, and along with those misalignments, you know, on the spine, all the soft tissue around it does get damaged. I you see know, the spasm, the myofasciitis, trigger points, all those things you probably mess with all That's day long, all right? Day long, all day right? long, yeah. So chiropractors, we work on that too in different ways. Yeah, whether it's some type of electrical stim or um, shock wave, mm-hmm. there's all kinds of ways that we do that. A lot of times I'll tell my clients, maybe stop and get a massage before you go to the chiropractor. Because sometimes they're so tight that it, it must be a heck of a time trying to move that. If I could loosen all the muscles around the spine, maybe maybe make it yeah. a little easier for the chiropractor to get in there and ma- move some bones around. Right. You know, because you're so locked up. Yeah, definitely. It goes hand in hand. Yeah. I, mean, I think massage, the massage and chiropractic really pair well together. Yeah. Definitely. And then in our office, we definitely will get patients ready for the adjustment instead of just, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there you That's go. That's a scary part. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's incredibly safe. It's, it's the safest profession Is of, of healthcare providers. Yeah. Really? We have the lowest malpractice rates of any other provider. No kidding. Yeah, because we don't kill or, or maim people. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Try not to as much yeah, as possible. Yeah, yeah, we don't do that. So people are healthy and they like yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to talk to you about that because I'm not real familiar with that. So it's it's okay. Should I? Um, would it be okay to have the massage like after? It seems like it would be better to be have before. Do you have massage therapists? I don't mean to ask you two. Questions. I have. I've had them in the past. Have you? Um, but but it's always about schedules and I see, and all right. that. That's so now I have um, two. 
aqua massage hydrotherapy lounges. Mm. I don't know if you've been on one of those, but no. it's open. But down at the wharf, there's one where you'd go in, you'd go face down, and the water jets would hit you in the back. Oh, okay. The ones I have, it's a lounge. You're reclined, and you have a little computer control, and you can control the pressure and the speed and all that. But it's these high-pressure stream mm. of water going up and down your spine. But it's actually hitting you? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's cool. a barrier, so you don't get wet. <laughs> oh, like, I, that's what I'm Yeah, asking. it's like being right. in a hot tub with crazy jets, Yeah, but you don't get wet. Ah, yeah. okay. and it's heated, too. Right, right. So it's very nice. So it's almost like, nice. a, like a water bed almost from the 70s. At, yeah, but with, with, with jets inside. Yes, yeah. with real powerful jets. That was really cool. And it can control yeah, the I'll pressure. Try, I'll yeah. check that out. And, you know, they're, the tables are easy to manage. They're always there. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I, don't, I just pay for them once. You don't have to worry about them showing up yeah, every day. Right. right? <laughs> I'm familiar with that. <laughs> so, yeah, it works pretty well. Yeah, we like that. Yeah. Well, I sure appreciate you coming in today and talking about the uh, improv thing because, uh, you know, I, you've really helped my friend Benjamin. Oh, and great. he's really turned a, the turned a page, you yeah. know. And uh, is there anything else you, you do, we want to link in? You got any books written or anything that? No, no, no books at this point. Uh, Monterey Comedy Improv. Okay. Dot com. They we'll put a link to that. Yeah. Okay. And, well, the chiropractic is New Beginnings Chiropractic. Sure. Dot com. And um, just looking forward to you showing up in, in La Tip, right? Because <laughs> right. we need a massage therapist. <laughs> yeah. And or dropping in a class. Sure. You or the producer man over here, welcome to pop right. in and see what it's like. And it truly opens up your world. Yeah. Really. Well, the world that's already there, it just takes off the blinders. Yeah. yeah. I'd really like to see that. I think I yeah. will make a point too. Uh, yeah, the schedule is open. We'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll even do a complimentary evaluation, chiropractic yeah, evaluation. Right to show you that I will not kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thrust that you were talking yeah. about. That's what always scares me. Yeah. You know. ah. won't, won't scare you. Yeah, right on. Again, thank you, thank you again for You're coming welcome. in, sir. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys coming in. Thanks a lot. Love you guys. Have a good night. See you.